So um, my name is Louise Brosnan. I currently work in Solace Restaurant in Dingle. Um, I'm a Dingle native myself. Um, I started my culinary journey probably unknowns to myself as a child working in my mother's bed and breakfast. Um, it was just a job for me at that stage, um, not something that I would consider a career. You know, being from Dingle, it's a, a touristy town. It was an option for, for money, I suppose. And then I started working in El Toro restaurant, which is no longer here. Across from Dingle Church upstairs it was a Spanish restaurant and I was waitressing. And then they were shorthanded in the kitchen one night. So I hopped in and that's where it all happened. I suppose that's where the magic starts. And I got my BA in culinary arts in 2015. So it was probably the best thing I've done and still I'm not finished. I definitely want to go back and do my master's. There, there's a great push for that, for me it, personally, because again, every time you go back to college, it's giving you more options. Um, this industry is so diverse and there's so many angles you can take. The more you study, the more it helps you go out into these different angles, I suppose. And so in an industry that's constantly changing, I think it's very important to, to keep training yourself as well. So education for that is, is key. I think food cultural identity will take a massive leap forward and I hope anyway, and pride of place and taking in your surroundings, using local produce, um, everything like that I think is very important and definitely going to go forward. Picking up the phone and, and calling your local fisherman or your local cheese maker whatever and having a conversation with them to me is really important because again you're, you're touching base so I would hate for it to go too computerized we'll say when it comes to cooking techniques then I do agree that there's you know there's a time and place for water baths stuff like that dehydrators um, I would hate for them to take over there's a lot to be said for a nice clean pan a nice bit of fish and a bit of oil let's not take away from the the simple techniques either so my hope would be that that wouldn't get lost, but that we'd have like a happy marriage of both maybe. Social media for us has taken um, a massive leap, obviously. Um, looking at the millennials and, and the way people use online advertising, that's what people generally go to now as opposed to a website. But um, I think constantly putting pictures up, image heavy and text little is the way forward, most likely, especially when it comes to food because people like to see what they may get and so that is important for them I think. I think it's important to work your way up in this industry absolutely because there's there's certain skills that need to be honed in and I think it only takes time to get those skills so obviously watching your senior whether it's your sous chef or your head chef as a commie you need to be watching everything and that's not even just in the kitchen. You need to be watching your floor staff. A sense of urgency, I think, is really important in this industry, but a sense of urgency together with um, pride and work, so you're not just rushing. So I think that's something that can only be learned by watching your seniors. So, for example, your sous chef, your chef de party, um, that's what the commies need to be looking at. Commie chefs learn from everyone, all their surroundings. For me, from what I've dealt with, um, a lot of executive chefs and head chefs, obviously they have a lot of pressure on them. But I think for them, a lot of the time is spent away from the kitchen, which is unfortunate for a business you love. And it tends to be a lot of paperwork, more so in overseeing. Now, obviously for big things, they'd be in the kitchen and over, like, hands on. Um, it's obviously something you'd strive to be, absolutely. But for me, I'm, I'm happy being an Indian rather than a chief because it's the likes of commies and chef de parties and sous chefs that are in the thick of it and getting stuff done all the time and for me that's where I want to be. Going back to food trends I suppose it's constantly changing. Dietary requirements have always been there it's always been something that we've had to deal with the chefs and it's fine I think when when you make the effort to do so and make everything we'll say gluten-free as much as possible. It's easier on us as, as food producers to, to just produce everything the same. With um, veganism, vegetarianism, we do a lot of it here. It's no issue and sometimes I see it as a challenge actually and it's great to, to have to come up with in particular desserts. Desserts are a challenge when it comes to vegan because you know you obviously don't have your eggs, you don't have your milk, your cream, your butter, anything like that 
Um, so yeah, I'd see it as a challenge for chefs. This is this is our job. Our job is to feed people and and obviously give them what they want as a consumer. They're paying a price. We're we're supposed to give it. So I'm all for that. And trying make try making things gluten free as much as possible is is the way forward too because more people I think are maybe wheat intolerant as the years go by it seems to be growing in numbers so it's something we have to adjust to so importance of um, family work balance for me it's it's key but it's it's something you always have a choice in so this industry gives you them choices so whether you want to work in hotels or restaurants it's the hours you put in so they'll always differ um, if you want to do maybe splits or if you have straight days or a bit of both so I think this this industry allows us that choice where especially if you have young kids that you want to be there in the morning you want to be there when they finish school and you want to be there at the evening to put them to bed you can you can work your way around it depending on which choice of place you work in this industry which is really important